He's laying right next to me. I guess he's a little shy right now. But this this video, as you see from the title, is going to heavily include him. Hi! Hello everyone! My name is Rachel and welcome slash welcome back to my channel. If it sounds like I have something in my throat, it's because it feels like there's something in my throat. That's what she said. <laughs> Okay, anyways, today's video, I saw Sarah Caroli do this, and as soon as I saw her do this, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do that. Today, Clark is going to be choosing what books I read for the week. I picked out six books, and I'm going to have him pick from the six books. The first book that I have is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This just seems like a light fuzzy read and I think it would be, I think it'd be an easy one. So I'm a little bit hoping that Clark picks this one. The next book that I have is one that has been on my TBR for a long time and I know that I would really like it. I just haven't felt inspired to read it. And so maybe, maybe Clark will pick it and maybe I'll finally feel inspired to read it. And it is the Adventures of Amina al Sarafi by Shana Chakraborty. This is a high fantasy. It's about a pirate who comes out of retirement for one last hurrah. The next book that I have is The Atlas Paradox by Olivier Blake. This has also been on my TBR for a while. I just know that this one's going to be like a heavy one and a little bit hard not to get into, but like, I just have a feeling that this is just going to suck my entire life into it. And so that's why I'm always hesitant to read those types of books, even though I know I'm going to love them. Maybe Clark will pick this one. Maybe since it's shiny, he'll pick it. I don't know. Another one is a night is another nice fluffy summer read and it is Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. I want to read this one but also I don't know if I'll like pick it up myself so I kind of need a push and maybe Clark will be that push to pick it up. <laughs> Next book I have is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins and then the last one I have is The Lost Summers of Newport by Beatrix Williams, Lauren Willig, and Karen white those are the six books that i have picked out are you gonna clark you've made an appearance <gasps> if only he was up there the whole time and he just makes it out of frame hilarious this boy is like don't even get me started let me get this stuff set up and then we'll have him pick the books okay yay i'm gonna film on my iphone and then i also have the six books set up down below and then I'll put the treats on it and are you ready to go he's like gonna think something scary is happening nothing scary is happening okay sit wait day wait he is just having the toughest time hey wait okay okay Wow, Archer's voice. Tina Al Sarafi. Okay. And the Atlas Paradox. Wow, what an interesting three books. He went to this. It, it's crazy that he went to Archer's voice first. Now he's just gonna continue hunting for more for more treats. It's done, sweet boy. The ones that it looks like I am reading this week. Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan, The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi by Shana Chakraborty, and The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. You did so good, Clark. Come here. Yes, you did so good, sweet boy. He hates looking at the camera, just always wants to look at me. And yeah, with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited, Clark. Mm -hmm.
book is in the background. So I finally finished The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. Let me say, I this took a lot longer than probably it should have. I started on Monday and now it's Friday. So it took me, what, like five days? It was a me thing. It's a me issue as to why it took me so long to read it because let me tell you, some of Shannon's best work. There was a moment about like 70 pages in that I had talked about where I got like baby Aelin vibes where I was like, oh my goodness, I'm like getting goosebumps because I'm just, I'm getting the sense that I'm going to fall in love with this female main character. <sighs> and I did. I truly did. Amina al Sarafi is such a relatable, lovely character, but also just a badass. She is who she is at the same time. I absolutely love that it's about a woman who is middle-aged, who has a daughter, and who is struggling between following her dreams and what she wants versus being a mother and what that means and like what that means to like pit those two things against each other and like if there is such a thing as it all being under one umbrella that you can follow your dreams and be like it just it touches on so many different things that I oh my gosh so absolutely love that absolutely loved the storyline absolutely loved the way that we got a little cameo I'm hoping that future books hold even more cameos because it's set up that way and I think it's set up so perfectly for it and when I tell you the banter the banter between Amina Delilah how do I say his name T Timu Timu and Majed all of her past crew members oh my guys I loved it so much this isn't a spoiler but there was at one point where all of them got back together after 10 years of not being together and Timu was like we're all back together should we rob a bank like we should rob something like it was just so <laughs> all of them together the way that Timu and Delilah would banter they were just such children and I I just it was so funny I think the stakes are only going to get higher and higher and so I'm just I'm very fascinated to see where this goes as far as like the plot this isn't set in a magical world however there is magic that comes into play I mean if it, it would be helpful as kind of like a background on just magic in the world like you don't run into much of it but as like a background reading City of Brass would maybe be a good thing to read before this but you don't necessarily need it loved the motherhood aspect of this the following your dreams aspect of this trying to do your best in impossible circumstances Shannon is just so good at writing that and so I just I loved this so much and part of me wants to believe that Clark chose this because I'm his mom and so he wanted me to read a book about a strong mother you know I like to believe that I'm gonna tell myself that star rating I think I would give this one a 4.5 and honestly I think that that half star is me induced I don't think it has anything to do with the book maybe I'll change it by the end of this video we'll see but oh my gosh please go read this please go read this if you are a high fantasy lover please go read this if you're not a high fantasy lover give it a shot. You know, if there's any book to give high fantasy a shot with, it's this one. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Okay. Anyways, good start. Good, good pick. Next book I think I'm going to read is Archer's Voice. I need a palate cleanser before I go into the Atlas Paradox. So Archer's Voice is next. We'll continue on. <laughs>
blog all that much. Anyways, so I finished this. I finished it in like two days, really in two sittings, I would say. I've been thinking about it, but honestly, it was a little bit, don't come for me, it was a little bit forgettable. Did I enjoy it as like a easy romance? Yes. Also, want to apologize, Archer, the main male character, is not deaf. He's actually mute, but it's because of an accident that has, like, severed his vocal cords or whatever. He's not deaf. He he just, he can't speak, so he can still hear. There's a lot of trauma that is in this book. However, it didn't go to the level that I thought it would. Like, I thought that this book would make me sad, which for a second, at the end... I think Mia knew what she was doing when she wrote a certain part because I was like, wait a second, what? And then we find out a page later. Oh no, it's like, okay. I guess I didn't feel like uber connected to it. Um, But again, it was, I would say, entertaining. I think it just had a lot of stuff going on. Like there were some different plot points in it that just felt very rushed. And so because they were rushed, the stakes I didn't feel were as hi. So I don't know. I guess overall, I think I would give it three stars. Will I forget about it? Probably. Sorry. But I thought Archer was a very interesting character, interesting male lead. I really liked the differentness of him compared to a lot of other male leads that I've read, at least. I really liked that. Um, I felt like that twisted it. And I also, it was almost like a sunshine sunshine book. Brie was really sunshine and really so was Archer and I rarely see those like there's always one that's like super broody and kind of mean but I wouldn't classify Archer as broody I just he was just misunderstood and just was a little bit socially awkward. It was good honestly it was great after reading The Adventures of Amina El Sarafi like I would want to pick up a book like this like right after that especially since that book was just like so like it got me so good so this is a good palate cleanser. Yeah it, it was fun it was a cute one. Would recommend if you are looking for a cute one. Again there are like there is like traumatic stuff in here it doesn't show but like it's talked about so at least know those trigger warnings before going into it however it's not I guess it's not delved into to a level that made me at least like super connect with it in a way it's more about how it was written not the actual trauma in which they endured if that makes sense the characters were really cute the plot I just feel like the stakes weren't as high as they could have been just because I think there was a lot of different aspects in the plot and something that made me roll my eyes is the ease in which the characters got right back into the community. The way when Brie showed up, she automatically had all these friends. She automatically had a job. She automatically had community, which is so in correct because it's not like she went like super out of her way to have community people approached her and just included her and like in my experience moving to new places that does not exist a little bit that was just like uh, I don't know if that's also Brie asked other people a lot about Archer didn't ask him about himself I mean she did But he like asked around town a lot about him. And I was like, maybe you should ask, maybe you should ask him these questions. And maybe instead of her asking about it, maybe if like it's about seeing the dynamic between Archer and the town, it's her witnessing different things that like make her realize, oh, people don't really like him or people are really standoffish with him or, you know, other people making like, random comments about him instead of her constantly being so like so Archer what's his deal just because it felt it just wasn't I just don't feel like that part of it was really finessed all that well Travis is a creep I don't think I want to read his book maybe I mean from the description of it I think he's supposed to be like a changed man but I hated him and I know that he's supposed to be redempted by the end sorry if this is giving too much away it might be But I don't like him, and I don't want to read his book. I'm sorry. 
Sorry that I said that so passionately. And if you loved his book, live, laugh, love that for you. You get it. Also, if you loved this book, live, laugh, love that for you. Like, I want people to enjoy their books. It just personally wasn't for me. And that's okay. We all have different book tastes, and that's beautiful. So, with that... Let's get into the Atlas Paradox. Let's see, let's see how this goes. I have a feeling that I'm really gonna like it. Clark is gone. He's just, he doesn't want to be a part of this video anymore. But by the end, I will get him. I'll get him. That this took me forever. It took me almost two weeks to read these three books. But first, let's talk about the Atlas Paradox. I literally just finished it like two seconds ago. I need to post this video tomorrow and so I was like I need to get through like 200 pages of this in a day and I did it. You know, I did it plenty of times. Okay, so this is hard because I did get sucked into it. It took me a good long while though. Like it wasn't like from the get-go. It wasn't like with the Atlas 6 where I was immediately like brought in. This took a while. And I think a big part of that had to do with the fact that it wasn't very plot heavy. There wasn't a lot of things actually happening. A lot of this book was us already knowing things and then waiting for the other characters to catch up. Because we knew where Libby was, right? We knew what was going on with Atlas. We knew what was going on with all of the characters and so really it was just waiting for all of them to put all the pieces together even though we already had the pieces so we already knew. I think because of that it just wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Also, I had a completely different idea from the end of the last book to this one. Like, I was completely wrong with what I was thinking that final scene of that first book meant. And I'm kind of sad about that. Also, just like, I needed one of the characters... I'll just say, I needed Ezra to have more agency. That's all I'll say. Like, I needed just... Anyways, there were just some ideas, especially towards the end, where I was like, okay, then what is the point of all of this? I don't want to get, like, too much into it. I will say I still enjoy the characters. There were some parts in it that really made me LOL, and so I loved that. The writing is still extremely dense, which I like in the sense that it gives credence to all of this pseudo-magical science, which is fun. Like, you can tell that Olivia Blake has put a lot of time and effort and care into that, and I really appreciate that however because there's not a lot of like action to break up those dense her dense writing basically it became just a lot to read it was very difficult 
to read. I feel like this book was really setting up for her last book. I just don't feel like a ton happened in this that we didn't already know. Like I just don't feel like we got a ton of new information. I am interested in reading the next one but this one just wasn't as good as the Atlas 6. The Atlas 6 just really hit for me. This one, it's a little bit disappointing, but it's still good. Like I would still give this book a four stars. So if you haven't started this book or you haven't started the Atlas 6, I may recommend that you wait until the third book comes out. Probably by the end of this year or early next year is when it'll come out. I'm not, I have, I didn't look it up, so I may be completely wrong. And so I'm very curious to see where this goes though. All the characters are so fascinating, they're so flawed, they're so... yeah. And also just the writing style, you can tell that Olivia Blake, she puts a lot of care into it and she's really cultivated it. She's so clever and she's so witty and I just, I love that. Clark, you would sit right off screen. <laughs> Did I use treats to bribe my son to be here with me? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. Where's the thing to open it? Oh, yeah. Clark, you did such a good job recommending me such good books. And as a treat for such good books, I want to give you... Yes. Thank you so much for doing this. Hey, nope, this isn't for you yet. You gotta sit. He keeps on, come over here. No, okay. <laughs> okay, you know what, whatever. Starting off, what I read was The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. Loved this one so much, gave it four and a half stars. I thought it was so much fun highly recommend this one if you are a high fantasy person even if you're not a high fantasy person i still would recommend this one let's see if i can okay <laughs> this is a weird angle but we're gonna do it so you'll be a part then the other book that you chose for me was archer's voice i ended up giving it three stars wasn't necessarily my favorite but that's all right it was a good palette cleanser for like in between these two heavy hitter books. The last book that you chose for me was The Atlas Paradox, which I gave four stars in case you were wondering, Clark. Yeah, you were very, yeah, now he's laying down. Anyways, all right, one more treat for being so good. <laughs> There's his little face. Okay, wait. Oh my gosh. You know what? Whatever. Well, anyways, Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I truly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, with that, I will talk to you all again soon. Bye! Clark, can you say bye? Bye! Oh my gosh, you're ridiculous. I can't do anything with you. You refuse. Okay.